for Denand de Salcher, slash SSR slash, or slash so SR slash, French, F. de Saucy the 26th, of November, 1857 the 22nd, of February, 1913, was a Swiss linguist and semiotician, whose ideas laid a foundation for many significant developments both in linguistics and semiology in the 20th century. He is widely considered one of the fathers of 20th century linguistics, and one of two major fathers, together with Charles Sanders Pierce, of semiotics semiology. One of his translators, Roy Harris, summarized Salcher's contribution to linguistics and the study of language in the following way. Language is no longer regarded as peripheral to our grasp of the world we live in, but as central to it. Words are not mere vocal labels or communicational adjuncts superimposed upon an already given order of things. They are collective products of social interaction, essential instruments through which human beings constitute and articulate their world. This typically 20th century view of language has profoundly influenced developments throughout the whole range of human sciences. It is particularly marked in linguistics, philosophy, psychology, sociology, and anthropology. Although they have undergone extension and critique over time, the dimensions of organization introduced by Salcher continue to inform contemporary approaches to the phenomenon of language. Prague School linguist Jan Mukaovsky writes that Salcher's discovery of the internal structure of the linguistic sign differentiated the sign both from meracoustic things and from mental processes, and that in this development neurodes were thereby open not only for linguistics, but also, in the future, for the theory of literature. Ruaya Hassan argues that the impact of Salcher's theory of the linguistic sign has been such that modern linguists and their theories have since been positioned by reference to him. They are known as pre sosorayon sosorayon anti sosorayon post sosorayon or non Salcher. 7 External Links Biography Ferdinand Mongen de Salcher was born in Geneva in 1857. His father was Henry Louis Frederick de Salcher, a mineralogist, entomologist, and taxonomist. So Sor showed signs of considerable talent and intellectual ability as early as the age of 14. After a year of studying Latin, Greek, and Sanskrit, and taking a variety of courses at the University of Geneva, he commenced graduate work at the University of Leipzig in 1876. Two years later at 21, Salcher published a book entitled Mars Early System Primitif des Voyels dans les langues indo Europeanes, dissertation, on the primitive vowel system in Indo-European languages. After this he studied for a year at Berlin, under the Privato Zenon, Heinrich Zimmer, with whom he studied Celtic, and Hermann Oldenburg, with whom he continued his studies of Sanskrit. He returned to Leipzig to defend his doctoral dissertation De Emploi du Genitif Absolu in Sanskrit, and was awarded his doctorate in February 1880. Soon afterwards, he relocated to Paris, where he lectured on Sanskrit, Gothic, and Old High German, and occasionally other subjects. He taught at the École Pratique des Hautes Etudes for eleven years, during which he was named Chevalier de la Légion Honor, Knight of the Legion of Honor. When offered a professorship in Geneva in 1891, he returned. So Sor lectured on Sanskrit and Indo-European at the University of Geneva for the remainder of his life. It was not until 1907 that Salcher began teaching the course of general linguistics, which he would offer three times, ending in the summer of 1911. He died in 1913 in Bufflin's Le Chateau, Vaud, Switzerland. His son was the psychoanalyst Raymond de Salcher. So Sor attempted at various times in the 1880s and 1890s to write a book on general linguistic matters. His lectures about important principles of language description in Geneva between 1907 and 1911 were collected and published by his pupils posthumously in the famous Cowers de Linguistique Générale in 1916. Some of his manuscripts, including an unfinished essay discovered in 1996, 
were published in writings in general linguistics, though most of the material in this book had already been published in English critical edition of the course in 1967 and 1974. Tufa. Legacy. Sauscher's theoretical reconstructions of the Pi vocalic system, and particularly his theory of laryngeals otherwise unattested at the time, bore fruit, and found confirmation, after the decipherment of Hittite, in the work of later generations of linguists, like Emil Benveniste and Walter Kuvrer, who both drew direct inspiration from their reading of the 1878 memoir. Sauscher also had a major impact on the development of linguistic theory in the first half of the 20th century. His two currents of thought emerged independently of each other, one in Europe, the other in America. The results of each incorporated the basic notions of Sauscher's thought, informing the central tenets of structural linguistics. His status in contemporary theoretical linguistics much diminished, with many key positions now dated or subject to challenge. Sauscher posited that linguistic form is arbitrary, and therefore that all languages function in a similar fashion. According to Sauscher, a language is arbitrary, because it is systematic, in that the whole is greater than the sum of its parts clarification needed also, all languages have their own concepts. And sound images, or signifies and signifiers. Therefore, Sauscher argues, languages have a relational conception of their elements, words, and their meanings are defined by comparing and contrasting their meanings to one another. For instance, the sound images clarification needed for, and the conception of a book differ from the sound images for, and the conception of a table. Languages are also arbitrary because of the nature of their linguistic elements, they are defined in terms of their function rather than in terms of their inherent qualities clarification needed finally, he posits, language has a social nature, in that it provides a larger context for analysis, determination, and realization of its structure clarification needed. In Europe, the most important work in this period of influence was done by the Prague School. Most notably, Nikolai Trubetskoy and Roman Jacobson headed the efforts of the Prague School in setting the course of phonological theory in the decades following 1940. Jacobson's universalizing structure of functional theory of phonology, based on a markedness hierarchy of distinctive features, was the first successful solution of a plane of linguistic analysis according to the Saussure on hypotheses. Elsewhere, Louis Jelmslev and the Copenhagen School propose new interpretations of linguistics from structuralist theoretical frameworks. In America, Sauscher's ideas informed the distributionalism of Leonard Bloomfield and the post-Bloomfieldian structuralism of such scholars as Eugene Adaw, Bernard Bloch, George L. Traeger, Rulinus Wells III, Charles Hockett, and through Zelig Harris the young Noam Chomsky. In addition to Chomsky's theory of transformational grammar, other contemporary developments of structuralism included Kenneth Pike's theory of tagmemics, Sidney Lamb's theory of stratificational grammar, and Michael Silverstein's work. Systemic functional linguistics is a theory considered to be based firmly on the Saussure on principles of the sign, albeit with some modifications. Ruai Ahasan described systemic functional linguistics as a post sosore on linguistic theory. Michael Halliday argues that Sosore took the sign as the organizing concept for linguistic structure, using it to express the conventional nature of language in the phrase arbitrary to sign. This has the effect of highlighting what is, in fact, the one point of arbitrariness in the system, namely the phonological shape of words, and hence allows the non-arbitrariness of the rest to emerge with greater clarity. An example of something that is distinctly non-arbitrary is the way different kinds of meaning in language are expressed by different kinds of grammatical structure, as appears when linguistic structure is interpreted in functional terms. Course in General Linguistics Sauscher's most influential work, Course in General Linguistics, Cowers der Linguistik General, was published posthumously in 1916 by former students Charles Bally and Albert C. Chahey, on the basis of notes taken from Sauscher's lectures in Geneva. The course became one of the seminal linguistics works of the 20th century, not primarily for the content, 
Many of the ideas had been anticipated in the works of other 20th century linguists, but rather for the innovative approach that Salcher applied in discussing linguistic phenomena. Its central notion is that language may be analyzed as a formal system of differential elements, apart from the messy dialectics of real time production and comprehension. Examples of these elements include his notion of the linguistic sign, which is composed of the signifier and the signified. Though the sign may also have a referent, Salcher took this last question to lead beyond the linguist's purview. Laryngeal theory. While a student, Salcher published an important work in Indo European philology that proposed the existence of ghosts in Proto Indo European called sonin coefficients. The Scandinavian scholar Hermann Mahler suggested that these might actually be laryngeal consonants, leading to what is now known as the laryngeal theory. It has been argued that the problem Salcher encountered of trying to explain how he was able to make systematic and predictive hypotheses from known linguistic data to unknown linguistic data stimulated his development of structuralism. So source predictions about the existence of primate coefficients slash laryngeals and their evolution proved a resounding success when the Hittite texts were discovered and deciphered some 50 years later, later critics. The neutrality of this article is disputed. Relevant discussion may be found on the talk page. Please do not remove this message until the dispute is resolved. February 2014 By the latter half of the 20th century, many of Salcher's ideas were under heavy criticism. His linguistic ideas are still considered important for their time, but have suffered considerably subsequently under rhetorical developments aimed at showing how linguistics had changed or was changing with the times. As a consequence, Salcher's ideas are now often presented by professional linguists as outdated and as superseded by developments such as cognitive linguistics and generative grammar, or have been so modified in their basic tenets as to make their use in their original formulations difficult without risking distortion, as in systemic linguistics. This development is occasionally overstated, however, for example Jan Koster states, Salcher, considered the most important linguist of the century in Europe, until the 1950s, hardly plays a role in current theoretical thinking about language, more accurate would be to say that Salcher's contributions have been absorbed into how language is approached at such a fundamental level as to be, for many intents and purposes, invisible, much like the contributions of the neogrammarians in the 19th century. Overreactions can also be seen in comments of the cognitive linguist Mark Turner, who reports that many of Salcher's concepts were wrong on a grand scale. He writ is necessary to be rather more finely nuanced in the positions attributed to Salcher and in their long-term influence on the development of linguistic theorizing. In all schools, for a more up-to-date tree reading of Salcher with respect to these issues, see Paul Thibault. Just as many principles of structure or linguistics are still pursued, modified and adapted in current practice, and according to what has been learned since about the embodied functioning of brain, and the role of language within this, so basic tenets begun with Salcher still can be found operating behind the scenes today. Semiology Salcher is one of the founding fathers of semiotics, which he called semiology. His concept of the sign slash signifier slash signified slash referent forms the color of the field. Equally crucial, although often overlooked or misapplied, is the dimension of the syntagmatic and paradigmatic axes of linguistic description. Influence outside linguistics. The principles and methods employed by structuralism were later adapted by French intellectuals in diverse fields such as Roland Barthes, Jacques Lassen, and Claude Levi-Strauss. Such scholars took influence from Salcher's ideas in their own areas of study, literary study slash philosophy, psychoanalysis, anthropology, respectively. However, their analogous interpretations of Salcher's linguistic theories led to proclamations of the end of structuralism in those two disciplines. Works Ferdinand A. Salcher, 2002 Eckert's De Linguistique Generale ISBN 978-2-07-076116-6
This volume, which consists mostly of material previously published by Angler, includes an attempt at reconstructing a text from a set of Salcher's manuscript pages headed The Double Essence of Language found in 1996, in Geneva. These pages contain ideas already familiar to Salcher scholars, both from Angler's critical edition of the course and from another unfinished book manuscript of Salcher's, published in 1995, by Maria Pia Marchis. Phonétique, Il Manuscrito di Harvard Houghton Library BMSFR 266, 8, Padova, Unipress, 1995. 1878, Memoirs Early Systeme Primitive des Voyelles dans les langues indo européennes Memoir, On the Primitive System of Vowels in Indo-European Languages, Leipzig, Teubner. Online version in Gallic Hat Program, Bibliothèque Nationale de France. 1881, De emploi du genitif absolu in Sanskrit, these, poorly docto represente à la faculté philosophie de l'Université de Leipzig, on the use of the genitive absolute in Sanskrit, doctoral dissertation presented to the Faculty of Philosophy of the Leipzig University, Geneva, Jules Guillaume Omphic. Online version on the Internet Archive. 1916, Cowers de Linguistique Générale, ed. C. Bali and A. C. Chate, with a collaboration of A. Riedlinger, Lausanne, and Paris, Peo, Trance. W. Baskin, Course in General Linguistics, Glasgow, Fontana Collins, 1977. 1922, Requeye des Publications Scientifiques de F. de Salcher, ed. C. Bali and L. Gaudier, Lausanne, and Geneva, Peo. 1993, Salcher's Third Course of Lectures in General Linguistics, 1910-1911, Emil Constantindras not Larendian, Language and Communication Series, Volume 12, Trans. And Ed. Ekomatsu and R. Harris, Oxford, Pergamon, 